Even as he experiences the violence of racism, bask up the brutality of some Boers, the humiliation and desperation of being forcibly removed and being homeless. But he also gets exposed to some white farmers who show humanity, who show empathy, who show support and care, who show that uh, um, in, the, in, in, in this black person, in this black family, they see a human being. And he has built close, lasting friendships with some white people that employed him. And you wouldn't say so when you see him today. And yet, the inverse of that, in fact, he sees in the Siskai police worse brutality in the torture chambers of the state than white security officers in Port Elizabeth. It does raise a very important question that I'll come back to. He sees in Neil Agat's death, where he spoke in memorial services, and harassment of his white comrades, white people who were greater brothers to him than those black guys who tortured him in the Siskai cells. It raises a very important question for us because now uh, we see things in black and white, don't we? So it raises a question about whether the agency for transformation is racially determined. Is it possible actually to have black people who are against transformation and white people who are champions of transformation? I will tell you uh, in the corporate environment amongst people who, who obstruct black progression, more often than not, are black people. And so we need to abuse ourselves of this notion that black equals progressive and white equals anti-transformation. The discourse about blackness in this country needs to be reopened because we're now sitting with racial chauvinism, actually. And I will include in this an organization that is supposed to champion non-racialism. Its narrative is, in, is increasingly embedded in racial language, in racist language, in a way that is very div divisive in this society. <laughs> 